Recent statistics say that about 85% of the world's population identifies with a, a particular religious group or organization. Some even say that there's, well, over 4,000 religious groups and organizations today. So, what exactly is religion in the first place and why is it important to know? I'm Bob Pauline, and that's what we'll study today right here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. And joining us in our discussion and broadcast for today is Brother Eric Waterman in Quezon City, Philippines, Brother Matt Talons in Washington, D.C., and Brother Joseph Penwell in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Brothers, thank you for joining us in our discussion and welcome. Thank you, Brother Bob. Brother thank Bob. you for allowing thank you, us to be Thank you, Brother Bob, for allowing us to be together. Brothers, you know, religion, it's, you know, it's one of those discussions that, well, people may think that they already have a grasp on what it's all about. But, you know, in reality, even when it comes to defining it, we get a variety of answers. If we go to uh, various dictionaries, for example, which, as we all know, are the authority in the study of words, even their definitions vary widely. Some say, it's a set of beliefs. Others, it's the belief in and worship of a superhuman power. A closer meaning would be from the origin of the word itself, relegari. The origin of the word religion comes from relegari, which means to tie back and a personal commitment to and serving God with worshipful devotion. Another argument, Brother Bob, is if religion is even necessary. So let us watch this video clip to see what others say about religion. Do we need religion? Whew. Whew. I don't know what that means. Mm, no. Yes. No. Absolutely. Oh, man, it's such a complicated question. I definitely have often thought it would be better if there were no religion and we could all just be rational scientists. It helps me, as long as it brings us together, not segregate. Whatever gets you through life, as long as you're not hurting somebody else, I'm pretty okay with. Everybody has the right to believe whatever they want and shouldn't ever feel like they're forced into something. I would never tell somebody like, hey, everybody needs to follow, insert arbitrary religion here. I don't think God, whatever you perceive him to be, belongs to any religion. There's no really one right religion of who's right, who's wrong. I don't think you should ever buy into something just because somebody tells you to. Religion is after all for making your life better, right? And making others' life better in the society. I don't know that you need a head person or a teaching or a book that tells you those things. I definitely feel like we need spirituality to understand that I'm, I'm living this life that is bigger than me and, and it's not about me and there's something greater going on. Something to believe in and whatever that really is, I don't think it's up to anyone to really tell you how you should do it. I think if you don't believe in anything, you're really lost. It helps a lot of people cope in life. It just makes life easier to have something else to believe in that can help you out in your time of need. As you heard, there are so many different views regarding religion, from it's needed, it's not needed, and even those who say they don't even know what religion is. Yes, Brother Joseph, it can be confusing to many. But as Christians, we should base our understanding about religion on the Bible. So does the Bible speak about religion? Is it really needed by man? Here is what is written in the Bible by the Apostle James, and stated in James chapter 1, the verse is 26. This is what we can read. If you think you are being religious, but can't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is useless. So the Apostle James here points out that there are those who claim to be religious, but their religion is useless. And uh, Brother Eric, consequently, then the Bible is saying there is that, well, not all religions, not only are they not the, the same, not all even have value, right? Correct, Brother Bob. It should not be just any religion so that one can say that they are religious. The next question must be then, which is the religion that is pleasing to the Almighty God? 
You know, Brother Matt, I think the Apostle James is the one who can give us the answer to that question. Let's read here in the book of James 1 and 27. Here is what he says. Religion that pleases God the Father must be pure and spotless. So therefore, the true religion must be pure and spotless according to the Bible. So brothers, our listeners probably are wondering, what is it that makes a religion pure and spotless? What should religion be based upon in order to make it pure and spotless? Let's listen to what is recorded here in the Bible once again in Psalms 12, and the verse is 6. This is recorded. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. So, according to the Bible, a religion to be pure is not simply declared by itself to be pure or spotless. It must have a basis and a claim to do such. So, uh, Brother Eric, then, if religion is true and will uh, then be pleasing to God, it has to be based upon the, the words of God. It must be based on His words, not on just anyone's words, anyone's opinion, especially, you know, popular beliefs or trends of the time, right? So true, Brother Bob, but does our Almighty God really seek for such a worship unto Him? Let us listen to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy, in chapter 10, and the verses are 12 and 13. Now, people of Israel, listen to what the Lord your God demands of you. Worship the Lord and do all that He commands. Love Him, serve Him with all your heart, and obey all His laws. I am giving them to you today for your benefit. To our viewers, we believe that you definitely want that your services be considered acceptable to our Almighty God. So what is it that we should make sure of? That we meet what the one we offer our services wants. And what does our Almighty God want? He wants that those who serve Him should obey all His commands. After all, that is the way we are going to benefit. And this is the true way of service or true religion. But why is it that following all of God's laws or commandments so important? Can one be a part of the true religion if they do not obey the commands or the laws of God? Again, brothers, let the Bible guide us here. Let us listen to what the Apostle John says here in his letter in 1 John 2. The verse is 3. This is what we can read. I will tell you how we can be sure that we know have a close relationship with God if we obey what He commands us to do. That shows us that we have a close relationship with Him. So we must always obey what He commands us to do. So, brothers, the only way then, from all that you were reading here from the Scriptures, the only way then to be religious, have a, a close relationship with God, or be in the true religion, is to always obey what God is commanding and instructing us to do. That's the only way that we're going to benefit. That's the only way that our religion will be true. Exactly, Brother Bob. The Apostle John even identifies those who say they may be religious, but do not obey the commandments of our Almighty God in a negative way. How does the Bible identify those that are doing that, uh, Brother, Brother Matt? Let me just read the following verse in here, or here in 1 John chapter 2 and the verses 4. This is what it said. Those who say we know have a close relationship with God and do not obey what God commands us to do are liars. They are not conducting their lives according to God's true message. Well, no one desires to be called a liar. And the Bible itself teaches us that to be counted as a liar is not a good thing. Why? Let's read the Bible. Here in the book of Revelation, the chapter is 21, and the verse is 8. Listen to this. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
So therefore, those who are liars will be placed into a very evil place, a very bad place, which is the lake of fire. And Brother Joseph, that truly is a terrible fate that will befall those who are liars, those who are not in the true religion, meaning a religion that is not based upon the teachings or the words of God written here in the Holy Bible, which is why, dear friends, we will endlessly invite you and encourage you continue to listen to the true words of God taught here in the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ. Now, you know, you might be wondering, how do I know if this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Church of Christ, is the true religion for me that I should enter and be part of? You know, there are many who have asked that same question before you. Let's take a look at what they experienced. Hi, thanks for being here and welcome to the Iglesia Ni Cristo Church of Christ. I'm Naima. So chances are you're watching this because a friend, a coworker, a classmate, a neighbor, or a loved one wanted you to check out this video about the church, right? Whatever it was, I'm thankful to have you here for a few minutes. You see, a few years back, my brother Ahmad invited me to a Bible study. And now I do the same, inviting everyone I can to share in the beautiful and powerful words of God. From all the peoples on earth, he chose you to be his own special people. Studies show the number one reason people go to church is to reconnect with God. And if that's what you're here for, you've come to the right place. Our worship services are solemn. No loud music or loud distractions, but rather savoring the moment of being in the house of God and one-on-one -on -one time with Him. All of our worship services consist on preaching based on purely God's words, no opinion, no personal stories. I remember attending my first worship service and feeling the music was so spiritual and listening to the words of God preach from the Bible um, it was question and answer, and it made me realize that God's words was straightforward, and I needed to hear everything that message had to offer that day. So we hope that, dear friends, you'll take the time to truly learn about the true religion that provides salvation and entrance into the holy city that we're all longing for on the upcoming Day of Judgment. But brothers, you know, we began this discussion looking at the definition of religion, and we, what we found there was that religion is returning back to God. True religion then leads people to truly return to God. Since man sinned and became separated from God because of that sin, what will bring people back to God? How do our viewers, how does anyone return to God? We, 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 we've got to get back to that question, Brother Joseph. You know, that's the answer that is given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Let's read here in John 14, and the verse is 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us he is the Savior he is the one that we should follow if we are his disciples. He's the one who's teaching us that the only way that we can get back to the Father or to God is by means of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, uh, but brothers, you know, many people believe that, the means, that what that means or what Jesus is saying there is that, well, they just need to believe in Jesus that he's, and therefore they're returning to God. Is, is that the way it is? No, Brother Bob, that's not biblically based. It, it cannot be. Why not, Brother Eric? Because, Brother Bob, what people need to know and understand is the instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ for those who want to return to God. What was spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior himself, is very clear. It is written here in John chapter 10, the verses 9. Allow me to read. I am the door. If anyone enters by me... He will be saved. Wait, wait, Brother Eric. You know, our, our viewers are no doubt going to be thinking here, wait a minute. Obviously, this is not entering the physical, fleshly body of Christ. Is that what he's saying here? That in order to get to heaven, we need to enter the physical body of Christ? 
But uh, Eric, Jesus is already in heaven. How, no. how, would, how would they do that? So according to the teaching, Jesus Christ is already in heaven, yes. But there's still an instruction, biblically speaking. According to the Bible, how do we enter into Christ our Lord? This is recorded here in Colossians 1, the verse is 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. So Brother Bob, entering into Christ is therefore entering into his body, the church. Th thank you for that, uh, Brother Eric. Brothers, which is the church that belongs to Christ, which is the church to enter into so that we could benefit from the instruction that he, he, that he gave for anyone who wants to attain salvation? Is that just entering any church that one may choose for themselves? No, Brother Bob. The Bible is very specific about this. And what is the name of that church that we should be a member of? Let us listen to what is written in Acts chapter 20. And the verse is 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. My friends, what is the name of the church that one has to be a member of as commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ? It is none other than the church of Christ. And so this is the church that is owned by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the church that one should be a member of so that he will be part of the true religion and therefore his services will be accepted by our Almighty God. That is why we continue to invite you, our friends, to join us, not only in our Bible studies, worship services, but to eventually become a member of this Church of Christ so that we will receive the blessings coming from our Almighty God, not only in this life, but most of all, salvation come the day of judgment. So, dear friends, we continue to invite you to know more about the Church of Christ by joining us in a Bible study in a local congregation that is near to you. Likewise, we have different kinds of activities online, the incmedia.org. And if you have any questions, you can also email us at info at incmedia.org. Well, dear friends, we'd like to thank Brother Joseph Penwell in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Brother Eric Waterman in Quezon City, Philippines, as well as Brother Matt Talens in Washington, D.C. Brothers, we thank you all for giving to us Bible-based answers, so that as the Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you are living the way you are. That's 1 Peter 3.15. Friends, that does it for us today here at the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. We hope that you will join us again next time. I'm Brother Bob Pauline. Thanks for watching. As we come to the end of the program, as always, we invite you, join with us for a short closing prayer. Almighty and loving Father, we draw near unto you, and we thank you for this opportunity that you gave unto us yes. to be able to proclaim your words to our friends and our family members. Yes. And we beg of you, Father, may we all be enlightened to your truth, be together in one place, O oh Father, in the true religion, serving and glorifying your most holy name. We thank you also, Father, for the administration that you place to guide us, especially our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, as he continues to lead the entire church to its salvation. Lord Jesus Christ, may you hear our prayer. May you increase our faith. May you please bring all of our prayers unto the Father in heaven. Father, we know you've heard us and you will be with us always. We ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.